Seduction? I'm not sure. What? Man, these trick questions are just can't. I can't get you. Amendment. The Bill of Rights. I don't know. I'm not done even. You don't know what we call that? No. Bill of Rights. That's way too hard. <laughs> Well, there are so many ways that you can get involved to fight the information war. You can write articles, YouTube videos, start your own radio show. But in this day and age when people don't really have a lot of time to sit down and read or tune into a three-hour radio show, images and art that can expose corruption and promote liberty have an instant effect. Uh, Anthony Frieda is one of those artists. He uses his talent to spread these controversial ideas and get people talking. His political art has appeared in Rolling Stone, Time Magazine, The New York Times, and here at InfoWars we often feature Anthony Frieda's work because of the powerful social commentary in his images. Anthony, welcome. It's great to see you again. I love what you do. I love that you're basically taking such this powerful medium and turned it against the the powers that be that basically try to use it to suggest things to us. And you have turned it around on them. I love it. Well, thanks, Leanne. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, Picasso said that uh, painting is a weapon, and I like to think about it like that. Um, for me, it's a weapon against tyranny. It's a weapon to promote peace and freedom and the ideas that you guys express on InfoWars, and to expose um, official lies and corruption and um, basically as a tool for good and a tool to promote truth and freedom. Right, it's, there is so much power in it. Now I've seen some of your recent work that's come out. You were clearly inspired by what happened there in Nevada, the battle for Bunkerville. Yeah, I was, um, you know, I wasn't so much defending Bundy because I don't know all the, you know, ins and outs of it, but I was more lambasting the, the obviously, you know, heavy-handed use of um, a paramilitary operation to collect a tax debt. I mean, that was, to me, was, I mean, they came there with guys with guns. They spent $2 million on a military operation, more than the tax debt they were supposed to there to collect. So that's taxpayer dollars going to collect. So it wasn't about collecting tax dollars. They came there with guns, they tasered people, they beat people, they herded them into no speech zones, or free speech zones, excuse me. And uh, <laughs> they stole they stole the guy's, you know, uh, property. They weren't authorized to do that either. So they were clearly, you know, outside the law that they said they were trying to impose. And um, when I tried to, you know, point this out to people, um, they just started talking to me in talking points, saying he's a deadbeat, he's a tax cheat, he's a terrorist. And of course, what was the final charge? Let's say it together, a racist. <laughs> a racist domestic terrorist. <laughs> yeah. Harry Reid said that. It was very chilling when Harry Reid said these people were terrorists because, I mean, they didn't, who, what violence did they do? Terrorists kill people for political, you know, reasons, you know, like Obama's doing and like uh, Harry Reid endorses policies that do that all over the world. So he's a terrorist. And these people didn't, as far as I know, there was no violence committed by the protests. It was all by the government. So that was the point I was trying to make, and people were just, what was upsetting to me is they were speaking to me in talking points, and they weren't even aware of it. You know, that's, that's the power that these talking points have, these memes have. That's why I'm trying to create counters to the White House talking points and the memes that go out there, either visually or, you know, um, just, uh, you know, verbal talking points. And um, this, is, this is what we have to do, create our own means for peace and freedom to counter, and it's a constant fight, but, but I think we're having some effect. Absolutely counter counter memes. So that that's also you know something very powerful too when you're dealing with something like the Ukraine or Syria where there might be a language barrier, but art will transcend that barrier. That's a good point. And a lot of my images, I mean, that's the whole idea. A picture's worth a thousand words, and it transcends mm -hmm. language. So I get these uh, you know some of these memes out there go globally, and they get picked up by. Um, sites all over the world. I've even seen my stuff on some Chinese sites picked up by Baidu and I don't I can't understand what they're saying. Hopefully they're saying nice things about me, but <laughs> they'll post my artwork on, you know, Chinese political blogs. Um, it's interesting to see where it where it winds up. But um, the interesting thing to me is also kind of trying to find common ground with my work. Like 
you know, uh, this film I'm working on right now, where we have people like Cindy Sheehan on there, and we have people, you know, we want to have Alex on there, Joe Salente is going to be part of it. And um, so people from kind of, you know, uh, very different ends of the political spectrum who have common ground. They, they, they promote peace and freedom. And this is what I'm interested in, rather than the whole divide and conquer, you know, uh, agenda of the establishment. I want to do the opposite. I want to try to find out what do we have in common? What are our common goals? And who's our real enemy? Is it, our, is it each other? Should we be, you know, at each other's throats, our neighbor's throats, our family's throats, our friend's throats? Or should we identify who's really, you know, uh, their agenda is against our best interests and, and go after them? Right, that's a huge battle to take on. And, and so this, you're speaking about this new documentary that you are you're running a Kickstarter campaign for. I think we've got just under 24 hours left at that's the right. hour of this that's broadcast. Right. That's right, Leanne. Thanks so much. The clock is ticking. Uh, if you go to Kickstarter and um, if you search Behind Truth Art, you'll find this film that uh, John Masseria contacted me. He's a filmmaker. He made um, Fukushima, Radiation Raining, Death Near You, and other fun titles like that. He's been involved in it. And uh, he's, um, he wants to, to create this, uh, this film that shows liberty, truth, art, you know, what moves people like me and what uh, the effect is we're having and what the prices we paid. And um, and he's going to use this as a starting point as a conversation for all these different uh, ideas that can branch out from, I guess, from the hub of a wheel, you know. Everything from GMO to uh, infringements on liberty to war crimes to whatever the images that I'm commenting on, we're going to kind of touch upon all these different issues. What are some of the more interesting parting gifts that you are giving? I, I think the the smallest contribution is three dollars, but obviously can go all the way up to ten thousand. I'm personally want some art, so <laughs> what are you what are you offering? <laughs> well, we have prints of there. You know, you can get signed prints of my work. You can get there's even you know if you give enough dough, you can get originals. But um, you know, we want to give something for a show our appreciation and. Um, Hopefully people that are fans of my work or fans of liberty and truth will you know, want to participate. I mean, like I said, you can get in for as little as what it costs a cup, for a cup of coffee, yeah. and you can be part of this. And I, and I think it's going to be exciting. We have some really interesting people, you know, uh, lined up. Comedian Lee Camp and uh, Richard Grove and Gerald and Cindy Sheehan and, and people that are passionate and kind of bringing their own take on these issues to the table. So it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting project that... Um, Hopefully we'll have some, some power and we can get going. It's very exciting. Well, so, you know, we're in a day and age where typically if you put your art up on the wall or something or when you even have it in a publication, you might not be able to see people's reaction to your work. But now we live in a day and age where people can interact with you on social networks. And what's been their response to some of your more controversial images? Well, I, you know, I've... Um I probably lost some friends, and I've gained a bunch of friends. You know, I, I'm nonpartisan. You know, I'm like with Gerald. I'm a political atheist, so I try to just call it as I see it objectively. Uh, and I call people who are outside of the oath they took to the Constitution, and I call people on war crimes, and I call people on corruption. And I mean, I don't care if they're a Democrat or Republican. You know, I mean, and it, it's affected my career. It's probably hurt me in some ways, because uh, most of the work I do for the Liberty Movement is all just, uh, I volunteer my services, labor of love. And I used to work for a lot of more mainstream publications, but I kind of I kind of enjoy more biting the hand that feeds me. Um, <laughs> I kind of pointing out, you know, when the New York Times is promoting crimes and promoting ideas that uh, led us into the Iraq war, I'm going to point that out, you know. And I'm not going to paint Obama like a Superman flying through the sky. You know, that's I'm going to paint him for what he he's really uh, done, and his his actions. I'm going to reflect them in my art. And a lot of people on the um, the Democrat you know bandwagon don't like that. Some of them are starting to come around, but it's taken a long time, and uh, I definitely paid a price. I mean, if it was if it was George Bush, you know, drone bombing people all over the world, I submitted New Yorker covers where it was uh, Obama's drone bombing. And I guarantee if Bush was president, there would be a Bush drone bombing New York recovery. But you're not going to see that New York recovery with Obama, are you? Oh, definitely not. He's definitely got them in the palm of his hand. So that's why it's so important to have 
artists who, you know, don't have to be afraid to express, and almost you can get away with the truth through art because, you know, it's it's meant to cause controversy. It's meant to get people thinking in a way that's a little bit more organic, I guess. Yeah. Well, the other thing is, you know, I try to use humor. So humor always tempers any message because, um, and you can do that with art. You can, you can, you know, you can make a cartoon, you can make something that kind of softens the blow uh, so people don't feel like you're just preaching to them, you know. And uh, I appreciate when Alex does that because it goes a long way. Anything you can do to help spread the message and get these, these memes out there um, in ways that are artistic and interesting and creative, I think creativity is a big part of it because it's not just the message; it's the uh, it's the the way you you know get that message out is very very important. You can either turn people off or you can bring them to your side. You know, if you want to, do you want to push people away? You want to bring them towards you. You know, the way you um, put these messages out there is a big part of that. Yeah, absolutely. With the presentation and now that you know everyone is so busy these days, it, you really only have just that moment to get your message across and you can win or lose people at a moment's notice. But Anthony, thank you so much for channeling your frustrations via such an effective medium. Um, and I can't wait to, I'm definitely donating. You're halfway there. I think we can do it. We got 24 hours to go and uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Hopefully I'll get something handpicked by Anthony Frida. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll make sure I send you something either way. But uh, one more project I want to mention is sure. Nate Men. My good friend Dan Zollinger is doing the artwork, and I'm co-producing it. And it's going to be a graphic novel about the, the real story of the Kennedy assassinations. And I think uh, your audience will appreciate it, and it's going to be brilliant. Wow, that sounds very interesting. We'll probably have you back to talk about that then. <laughs> <laughs> sounds good. All right, thanks, Anthony. Thank you. Well, you see, we've all got our part to play in the info war. There is no talent that is too small. And you can also do your part to help fight the info war by becoming a member of Prison Planet TV. Your subscription will allow you to get instant access to the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, all of our special reports, movies, rants, and ebooks. And Best of all, you can share your username and password with up to 11 other people at the same time time. So thank you very much for supporting what we do here at InfoWars and for tuning into the show tonight. We'll see you here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.